G'day viewers, uh, thanks again for joining me in another walkabout out here in the beautiful Shoalhaven River, uh, absolute beautiful part of the world. Came here a couple of months ago with a few mates and um, yeah, had a really nice time. Didn't film that trip, just sort of enjoyed it. And I thought I'd come back and do a little solo trip before I go back to work next week and just because it's an absolute stunning place, like you're just surrounded by these giant sandstone cliffs with eucalypt forest touching the water's edge. It's a pretty special place. And there's not many people in the water today, which is good. So I almost have the whole place to myself. There's a few people here and there, but not too many, which is nice. I uh, also got the new canoe this time. It's my birthday back in December, turned 30. So my girlfriend and all my mates decided to chip in and, and buy this for me, which is incredibly nice of them. I'm a very lucky guy to have yeah, a bunch of good mates like them. So yeah, it's paddling beautifully. Absolutely stoked with it. It's an old town discovery. When once I pull up on the shore later, I'll sort of do a quick little film around and show you what it looks like and stuff, but couldn't be, couldn't be happier with it. Uh, Weather-wise, a little bit iffy today. Yesterday was an absolute scorcher. It was about 38 degrees, and then had a massive um, storm come through yesterday, Arvo. So I was meant to go leave yesterday morning for the trip, but I decided to bail because I didn't want to spend all day just getting punished by the sun in the canoe, and plus with the storm last night, we've been pretty uncomfortable. So. I think it was a good decision to make to leave it till today. Um, it's a bit cloudy, but not too bad. Might get a little bit of rain a bit later on, but nothing I can't handle. Uh, but yeah, it's quite nice. There are not many people on the river, which is nice. Only a few people here and there. It's always nice when you kind of get the place to yourself. I think the weather's kind of turned a lot of people off. But yeah, I've got the fishing rod with me as well, so I'm pretty keen to chuck it in and see if I can catch anything this time. I haven't had much luck over the last few months with fishing, but See how we go, fingers crossed. I think we're gonna be on here. I think <laughs> maybe today's my lucky day. Uh, anyway, let's get paddling down the river until we find a nice campsite. Man, this place is absolutely stunning. Look at those sandstone cliffs. Absolutely incredible. You can see it's got like a, some water marks from, I guess in heavy rain, you get a waterfall coming off the front of that ridge just there on the left. Absolutely stunning. Always find the Aussie bush, um, especially this kind of sandstone country, just has such an ancient feel to it. It's kind of frozen in time. Now, I don't know if you can hear that weird sound in the bush, but it's actually a lyre bird. What they do is they try and mimic the sounds of other birds in an attempt to try and attract a mate. Yeah, they're pretty incredible. Check out this. This is pretty cool. Obviously when they flooded the dam, all the trees in the banks got submerged. So now you've got a bit of a tree graveyard going on. Makes for a pretty eerie sight. It's pretty cool though.
So here, right here is where we camped last time a few months ago when I was here with my mates. Could probably camp there again. Uh, got this nice little inlet here which seen out a few jumping fish last time so it could be have a lot of potential. Though still early days, wouldn't mind paddling a little bit further down but might just pull in here, have some lunch and then decide. Yeah, so it's not about a little spot here. We've got a fire pit going, plenty of flat level ground to put a tent, put a little tarp shelter, and heaps of trees to so string up a hammock if you want to. Even more flat ground, so yeah, pretty spot for choice here. Um, what I'm thinking I might do though, because this is where I camped a couple of months ago with my mates, I think I might go a little bit further down the river, because it's probably about 3 o'clock now, or about 3.30. It gets dark about 8.30 or so, so I've still got about five hours left to light. So I think if I go a bit further down the river, I'll see what's down there. And if I can't find a better spot than here, then I'll just come back up here. But so far the wind's still pretty light, so I think I might try and take advantage and just, yeah, see what else is down the river. And these things are the bee's knees. They're so good when you go on bushwalks and hikes. Such a tasty little snack. It just keeps blowing my mind out. Eh? Absolutely beautiful. So it looks like things are starting to change a little bit up here. Um, fair few conifers, she oaks, growing on the sides of the banks, and also seems to be getting a bit more narrower, this river. And I've hit the bottom a few times, so it's getting a little bit shallower as well. There's also a fair few boulders starting to pop up. Um, yeah, I haven't, I've seen a few potential campsites, but nothing, like, to be honest, nothing that sort of grabbed me as much as the first one I stopped at for lunch. I kind of almost wish I probably just stayed there. But it's also the winds picked up as well, so I think if I wanted to go back to that spot, that site, I'd probably have a bit of trouble trying to push back into the headwind. But yeah, I know that you can see, there's a fair few boulders starting to pop up in the middle. A really big one right here. But see how we go. Just keep paddling a little bit further up and hopefully come across a nice site. I'm kind of hoping. I'm, I'm, I want to find a site that's not too steep, not too hilly. I kind of want to like have the canoe right next to me and maybe even drape the tarp over the canoe and make a little shelter that way or something like that. A lot of the sites I seem to have found tend to be a little bit steep, so you kind of have to leave the canoe at the bottom and camp up the top, but see how we go, see what I can find. I've just pulled up in the canoe for a moment. It looks like I'm at a pretty big campsite here. So this might be Fosca's flat. Pretty nice area. There seems to be a sign, maybe like a little pit toilet up there. So I'm just gonna have a wander up there and see what it is. Yeah, so here's the map. You can see I started here at Talua Dam. Paddle around. That's that campsite that stopped for lunch, which I kinda wish I stayed at now. But I've paddled down and I'm just here. So there, actually Fosca's flat's just a bit further up, so probably about another kilometer. So I might paddle up there and see what it's like up there. Yeah, so I've come to a bit of a roadblock. There's a few rapids here, which isn't too much of an issue. I can easily portage around it, but 
The big issue is that everything seems to be pretty big pebbles now. There's sort of no big sandy beaches anymore. Uh, and I, the idea, I was hoping to try and um, yeah, use a tarp and make a shelter and sleep on the ground. And I don't really want to be sleeping on pebbles. So I'm kind of thinking I might backtrack a bit and just see if I can find a sandy beach further back or if I have enough time, maybe go all the way back to the original spot. It's probably only about an hour's paddle further back. Just really depends how strong that wind is and whether it's going to slow me down or not. But yeah, I don't think I really want to camp around here. It's, an, it's a pretty spot and I'm sure if you had a tent and you weren't too fussed about making a tarp shelter, I'm sure it'd be fine. But I think I want to do that. I do have my hammock, so I could always always hammock. Um, yeah, chuck the hammock up and sleep in that. But I don't know. I was kind of hoping to do the tarp, but yeah, we'll see. Oh man, I'm wrecked, eh? Gosh. I think I started about 11 o'clock paddling, and it's now about 6 o'clock now, so it's a good seven hours. <laughs> I'm pretty buggered. Um, and those the last three hours were basically just a waste of time. I left here at about 3, 3.30, um, after I had some lunch, and then, yeah, paddling down there, and then just coming back against that headwind pretty strong and um, really really slowed me down so pretty exhausted now but still got about two hours of good light left um, sun should set about 8 8 30 I think so probably get a wriggle on I haven't quite decided whether I'm gonna do a tarp shelter or a hammock I'm probably thinking maybe a tarp shelter could be cool I don't tend to do a whole lot of tarp shelters so and this is pretty solid um, flat ground so I think it could be good to try and utilize that but yeah all right, let's get a wriggle on. It's a pretty nice campsite though. Cannot complain about this view. So we've got the DD hammock, three by three meter top, and just a little ground sheet. So let's get that set up. So I've got my DD hammock 3x3 meter tarp and just a ground sheet. Uh, I think I might try and make a tarp tent this time. I've never actually made one before, so yeah, let's see how we go.
Alright, so I'll show you where I'm at at this stage. So basically with the back corners, I'll fold it back out so you can see it. So you just want to take it one, one loop in and then peg it, and then one loop in and peg it over there, and then fold that corner in. And then do the same on the other side. So one loop in, one loop in, fold it. And then with the front, so I've already pegged that one in, but I'll show you on this side. So once you sort of have it out flat like that, you basically want to take this corner and bring it over to that position. So if I get that, and then bring it over to where this one is and peg that in. It's a bit hard with one hand and hand holding a camera. Uh, so, you've got, so you've got that side folded in. So it's kind of doing this shape at the moment. And what I'll do is I'll put a, a support post that I cut down before and put it the second rung in and then um, yeah, lift it up and that should create this, the shape of the tent. Yeah, so if you sort of grab that second rung in, that position, you pull it up. That way you kind of get a, a gist of how high it's going to be. So I kind of want to cut that support post at about hip height, plus probably another half a foot or so, because I'll probably drive that into the ground. So about that height. should roughly be the height. Once I, once I drive that in, that should be alright. Alright, so now that I've got this pretty much cut to shape, I'm just going to roughly mark out where it's going to sit. Just knock it in a little bit, it doesn't have to go in too far. You probably don't even have to knock, um, knock it in at all. You probably just get like a, a hiking pole, trekking pole, and just sit it in there. Yeah, I think a trekking pole would probably work better. That way you can get in there and adjust it. Um, but stick works just as good. Yeah. So now I know that that's pretty much the height I want it. I'm going to get my dirty old socks and just wrap that around the top. That way the branch won't put a hole through my tent, my top. Yeah, so you can start to see the shape now. Yeah, so you just guy rope this back out to the to the end peg. I just do the same to the other side. There you have it. Looks pretty cool. Not bad for a first time. Uh, the only problem about this design is it doesn't have a ground sheet because uh, all the tarps used in creating the structure. So I just got a little ground sheet that I tend to bring with me. Just chuck that inside and hopefully that'll keep all the creepy crawlies off me.
And just to stop this from flapping down, we just get another guy rope. Just put it through. And we just peg that down out here. No, it's pretty nice and taut. I like it, looks good. Now for the grand tour. Not bad for a first job. Like I said, I've never practiced this before, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'll show you around the back. So you do lose a little bit of space here. It kind of flattens out a little bit, but if you have a look inside, it's actually tons of room. So I've got a ground sheet in there at the moment. And there's still room at the front to put your log, um, your gear and stuff like that. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Thought I might show you a simple way to sort of attach your guy ropes to these loops without having to sort of actually tie it onto this. So we just create like a little loop, tuck that around, and you pass that end through you'll see you get another loop coming out here. If you just put a little toggle through it. That way it's nice and secure when you want to undo it. Just pull out the toggle. Comes undone real easy. Saves you sort of untying it again. Quite a handy little knot, I reckon. So here's to show you how much space you get in the inside. Easily lay down. Still a little bit of room over there for your gear. And a nice little door with a view. Cannot complain about that. Alright, well I've got all the sticks ready for later on. It's about 8 o'clock, so it's probably going to get dark pretty soon, probably within about half an hour or so. Uh, I really want to have a fish, so I might grab the rod and have a quick flick and see if I can catch anything, probably for about 20 minutes or so, and then after that I'll come back and get the fire started. I was really hoping to probably spend a lot more time fishing today, but gosh, I spent so much time paddling around like an idiot. Uh, kind of um, run out of time, but it seems to be the story of my life. Anyway, we'll see how we go now.
Man, it's bloody mozzie city over here. I'll go try my luck a bit further around. It's starting to get pretty dark now. Such a beautiful time of night. The bush is just echoing with the sounds of cicadas and the currawongs. It's pretty beautiful. No luck with the fishing unfortunately, but I didn't really give much time to... I probably tried for about 20 minutes before it was getting too dark, so try again in the morning, I reckon. Oh, it's such a nice time of night. Let's go back and put this fire on there. Man, far out. That was pretty crazy. Just um, heard some like something across the river. It sounded like a rock sort of tumbling down a hill. So I sort of went over to the edge of the water. I tried to shine the torch over, couldn't see anything, but you could just hear it sort of like rolling down the hill, like dot 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 dot. And then um, yeah, then a big splash in the water, and then another one followed straight after a splash in the water. So that's pretty sketchy when you think about. Um, yeah, rocks falling from all the way up there and just rolling all the way through here straight into the, into the river. Pretty sketchy. When we were here last time, we actually heard a really big rock fall. We were just sort of sitting around the fire, me and my two mates, and we heard a big rock fall. It sounded like it was on this side of the river and uh, probably, yeah, down that way somewhere. And that sounded like a big crash and then, poof, and then like we heard like a tree kind of snap. Uh, it didn't make it to the water. I didn't hear, didn't hear any splash, but still, pretty bloody sketchy when you think about like you're just camping down here and all of a sudden a rock would just come tumbling through the campsite uh, yeah pretty sketchy times but that's fingers crossed that doesn't happen tonight so tonight since I've got no fish <laughs> lucky I bought some steak otherwise I would have been pretty screwed uh, I've also got with that it's kind of a little sweet potato and I might, I might fry up some mushrooms as well. There should be another one. Yep. It's a couple of mushies, sweet potato and a steak. I think that'll do me. I'm not even going to bother chucking foil in this. I think I'll just chuck that straight into coals like that. Just cover it up. As always, just got some kangaroo steak here. It's already marinated. You can buy like that from the shops. Never actually tried this, but I might chuck some 
duka or ducker or however you say it. Let's see how that goes. Stuff smells and tastes delicious. If you've never tried it before, definitely try and hunt this stuff down. Like I said, I'm probably absolutely butchering how you say it. Either it's duka or ducker. I can't I can't remember. But tastes delicious. You can also put the stuff on like chicken, like chicken breast to make like a schnitzel out of it. It's absolutely delicious. Just a bit of olive oil. Yeah, I think that's just about done. Gonna cook up some buttery mushrooms as well to go with it. I reckon this is about ready to turn over. Oh yeah. That is looking mighty good. Alright, well I think everything's about done. That looks beautiful. Well, I don't know about you, but after all the energy I used up today, this looks absolutely delicious. Even if this is covered in charcoal and ash. So look at that. Oh man, that is perfect. Perfect. I cannot wait to get stuck into this. Let's try some of that. Oh man, that is delicious. Oh, so nice. All right, moment of truth, let's check out this steak. Perfect. Seriously, every single time I go camping, I cook it absolutely perfect. At home, I always seem to butcher it. it always seems to be raw on the inside and cooked on the outside, but over a fire, you cannot get better than that. That looks absolutely delicious. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I wish you guys could try this. Oh man. If you guys can find kangaroo steak um, in your supermarkets or butcheries, definitely try and get some because like I've said in so many videos, a lot of people don't like it, but I absolutely love it. So tasty. Such a nice lean meat. to that and some mushrooms oh man now you're talking <laughs> this is well earned all right I'm not gonna <laughs> keep eating and talking to you guys so I'll get to you get back to you after I finish this all right, what have we got in this bag, goodies? Ooh. 
Young Henry's noble cut gin. Now you're talking. Also got some tonic to go with it. A lemon. And yeah, this sweet new mug I got a couple of weeks ago. It's by the same guys that do my hammock um, called Alton Goods. This one's a titanium double walled mug. So yeah, so it's got two two layers. So basically if you've got cold drinks in there, it's gonna keep it's gonna insulate it and keep it colder for longer, or if you've got hot drinks in there, it's gonna insulate it and keep it warmer for longer. It's also got this sweet little lid where you can close the close the opening so that way it's like a no spill. Or you just open it back up. So it's a pretty sweet little mug. That pops off. Yeah, pretty stoked with it. We really like it. Perfect for my gins. The benefits of canoe camping means you can take an esky with actual bottles rather than just 600ml pre-mixed water bottles. This gin is, if you like your gin, try this, this out. This is absolutely delicious. This is what, what got me into gin. It's um, yeah, made with the native ingredients and it's quite florally. It's really nice. It'd be nice if it had some ice, but hey, kind of everything. Cheers, guys. Man, I'm absolutely wrecked, eh? It's been a very long day. I left home about 7.30 this morning, didn't start the paddle until about 11, and then didn't end up at the campsite till after six. So, yeah, in hindsight, I kind of wish when I stopped here for lunch at about 3, 3.30, I wish I just stayed put, because it would have gave me so much more time to get camp set up, go for a proper fish, because that's the whole point of this trip was I really wanted to give yeah, give it a proper go. Um, really try and catch something for dinner. But yeah, I only managed to get in, what, about 20 minutes before sunset. And that's definitely not enough time to, um, yeah, to really get something decent. So kicking myself a bit. But tomorrow morning, I think I'll just wake up and I'll give it another crack and see, see if I can land anything. But oh, well, it's always a way you kind of... When you find a good spot, sometimes it's best just to stick there because the problem I have is I always kind of want to see what's around the corner and in doing that, it can take up so much more time. Um, yeah, I think I kind of need to learn to slow down a bit and when I find a spot that's that's good, just, just settle with it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, so like I was saying this earlier today, sorry I haven't really been able to get a video out uh, recently. I think the last one was in November. And yeah, it's just been absolutely mayhem the last couple of months. Uh, I think in my last video I was saying that me and the girlfriend um, were looking at buying a house and yeah just actually just as I left that trip in Walmart and I was driving home got a call from the agent just to say that um, yeah the vendors accepted our offer so which is yeah pretty stoked about so so we moved in early December um, so that's why I haven't been able to get out and too many camping videos it's just been pretty crazy getting everything like organized and moving in and setting up the new house and doing bits and pieces and stuff so but it's pretty exciting times um, something we worked pretty hard to to get the last three years we really knocked it down and saved and to, to see it finally pay off is a is a pretty good feeling and it's in a, it's in a very beautiful part of um of sydney as well we're pretty stoked where we ended up we never thought we would be able to live in this kind of area and we just um just somehow got lucky and yeah the timing was right uh, compared to this time last year when prices were just bloody through the roof, at least they've dropped, they're still bloody expensive, um, but at least they dropped a fair bit in the last year, so got pretty lucky there. But um, yeah, this year, pretty pretty keen to get stuck into a fair few adventures this year. Last year I had such a good year, I spent so much time outdoors, I've never camped or spent more times camping last year than I have ever in my life, and I absolutely loved it. And most of that was solo too. Like a few trips I was like with mates and stuff, but most of it was actually just going solo. And man, you can learn so much from yourself when you spend yeah, time in the bush by yourself. It's pretty, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool feeling. Knowing that you can just sort of rely on yourself and not anyone else. And if anything goes wrong, then you've got to deal with it. And yeah, I quite like it. 
obviously I like camping with mates too. I'm not just a bit of a loner. I like doing a bit of both, yeah. But this year, yeah, plan to do some pretty big trips this year. Um, hoping to go back out next weekend because I start work just after that. So pretty keen to get another trip in before I start work. But yeah, in the next couple of months, pretty keen to do white sort of on the tail end of summer and going into autumn, pretty keen to do some trips. Yeah, maybe down the south coast. There's a, there's an, um, I think it's a wilderness area pretty far down the south coast, almost on the border of Victoria. It's like a, yeah, I think it's a pretty big stretch of coast that's just wilderness and pretty keen to go down there and spend maybe five days just hiking through it. I think that'd be pretty stunning. And get back into the Butterwanks as well. I'm pretty keen to go check that out again. It says, yeah, before I know it, it's probably going to be a year before I went there the last time. And I absolutely loved it there. So keen to go back out and explore a bit more around there. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any tips or like where you reckon I should go this year, uh, yeah, leave us a comment because I try my hardest to sort of search on the internet and stuff, but first-hand knowledge is always best. So if you guys reckon you got a few tips on where you reckon um, be a nice place to go wild camp and stuff please let us know um, even if it's like some spots you don't really want to put on uh, on the public feed maybe send us a private message in um, in my Instagram or something like that that way you don't have to display it to the whole world and I can always keep it secret as well but oh whoa <laughs> Shit, there's a possum right behind me <laughs> cute little guy probably going to get my chocolate soon but yeah anyway um, I think that's probably about it yeah I think I'll probably just yeah, sit back and enjoy my gin and I'm going to call it quits pretty soon I'm absolutely exhausted so pretty keen to crawl back into this little contraption that I made this afternoon and yeah and then wake up early tomorrow and try to go for a bit of a fish and hopefully it's not raining or anything and um yeah, paddle back on out of here, so. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the morning.
I woke up to a bit of a dull morning this morning. So not really complaining. It's actually quite nice when it's a bit overcast. Otherwise the sun can get a little bit intense, especially when you're trying to cook brekkie in the morning. Yeah, the tarp tent. Actually really impressed with it. Hey, had a pretty good night's sleep. Um, I kind of thought it was going to be a little bit claustrophobic, but actually there's a fair bit of space inside, so pretty impressed with it. I think I'll continue to do this kind of setup in the future, I reckon. Man, you can hear the cicadas are going pretty crazy at the moment. They're so loud. I hope you guys can hear the audio. Um, I think it's about 10 o'clock or a bit after me, about quarter past 10. So I've got a, about, I think it's about two and a half, three hour paddle back to the car. So I kind of don't want to dilly-dally too much. So I'm probably just going to pack down the tarp now uh, and then just start paddling back because then I've got a few hour drive after that to get back to home. So might try and stop on the way and go for a bit of a fish. Uh, but yeah, probably not waste too much time. Anyway, I'll probably get this packed down and I'll um, touch you guys in a bit. Just realised I almost forgot to show you guys the new canoe. Ain't she a gorgeous girl? This is an old town canoe and it's a Discovery 119. As you can see it's a single man canoe with a, just a bench seat. I was looking at getting the two man canoe but uh, most of my trips I do are just solo and this fits on top of the car perfectly. It doesn't um, hang over too much which is good. Absolutely loving the camo colour too. It was, um, in Australia, we don't have a huge canoe culture. I find that um, kayaks are a lot more popular. So trying to find a shop that sold these canoes was a little bit difficult, but managed to find a place in Sydney. I think the place is called Waves. And uh, yeah, like I said, my girlfriend and my friends decided to chip in and buy this for my 30th birthday back in December. So pretty stoked. I'm a very lucky guy, got some awesome friends. Can't wait to get some decent adventures in with this thing this year. Just got a little cicada lure. Let's see how it goes. Oh. <laughs> Off to a good start. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, I think I'm on here. You're kidding. Yep. Kidding. I was on there. I was on for sure. I think he's just gone underneath this branch and somehow got it out of his mouth. Pretty close, but. Bass in it. For someone who hasn't fished much. Trying to get the lure as close to the fallen trees as possible without getting snagged. <laughs> it's pretty tricky. Alright, well it's nearly one o'clock and um, still got probably about half an hour paddle back to the car and then a fair decent drive so kind of want to get back pretty soon, so this is probably the last few casts. Let's see how we go. No deal, unfortunately. Got pretty close though. Gosh, that, um, that was a pretty decent strike and I felt like I had him on the line for a little while but yeah, I think he just ducked underneath the, the fallen log and somehow it wriggled out of his mouth. Pretty close. Kind of wish I had more time today to fish but yeah, it's starting to get a little bit late so I might have to head back. Maybe if I sort of making good time I might stop again but see how we go. All right guys, well, I think that's me done for the trip. I'm almost back at the dam where the car's parked. So I uh, just want to wrap it up and say thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun. This place is some beautiful country. So definitely be back here again soon. Anyway, um, like I said, thanks for watching guys and um, I'll see you next time. Hooroo.